Senate Intelligence Committee member James Lankford. He joins us from Oklahoma City. Good morning, Senator. I want to start with uh, Director Comey's testimony. Now that it's done, is the committee's work in looking into whether the president tried to influence the investigation, is that done now? Oh, no, far from it. This is one interview of about 36 that we've already done. Uh, we're not complete yet. We've gone through thousands of pages of documents. Uh, if, if in any way we left the impression this was the culmination of our, of our process, that would be incorrect. Uh, this is only the midpoint of it. We're trying to get all the facts out, both on Russia's uh, trying to interfere in our election. If any American uh, tried to be able to reach back to them to be able to assist Russia in interfering in our election and how classified documents got in the public sphere. So we're still in the middle of that. And does that also being in the middle of that also includes looking into the president and what he may or may not have done with respect to the ongoing investigation? Sure, that's just part of the process. Obviously, if there was any American, including the president, was trying to interfere in the election or to try to do obstruction of justice, that would be very important to know. Obviously, there's a criminal investigation that's ongoing with a special counsel. We have a unique policy role in it and an oversight role to make sure nothing's missed. So the special counsel and the FBI, we go through all the documents. We want to make sure they've seen everything, they've gone through everything, they're doing their criminal work. But we have a policy uh, set of issues that we also have to go through and we're going to continue to work our way through the, everything. What do you make now that it's been a few days of uh, former director Comey's testimony? It, it was surprising. Uh, a lot of people have asked me lately, even here in Oklahoma, did you learn anything from it? Was there th things that were new? And yes, there certainly were things that were new. Uh, things like uh, Director Comey stepping in and saying, yes, I leaked those documents uh, to be able to get out the information of my memos. For him to say the president did ask me about it three times, or he voluntarily, that is, uh, said, you're not under investigation to the President of the United States. Uh, Comey also made it very clear during his testimony and multiple times uh, that the President never asked him to stop the Russia investigation, uh, that the comments about, I wish you'd let this go, related to Michael Flynn, but never came up again, and no one from the White House ever brought it up to again uh, uh, after that initial conversation February the 14th. Uh, so we're trying to evaluate what really happened, what's the background of it, what, are the, what other information can we gain. We also obviously went into a classified session with Jim Comey to go into greater detail on the Russia portion of it. So what a lot of people saw was the open portion of it was more the palace intrigue of his firing and all that transition yeah. in the private meetings. But we have a lot deeper information to get to. Let me ask you about the question of leaks. You pay a lot of attention to that on the Senate Intelligence Committee. On the scale of, at the one end, leaks that are uh, just inconvenient, but nothing illegal to those that are illegal and damaging to national security. Where do you put the leaks that the leaks from James Comey on that scale? Yeah, releasing his memos is not damaging to national security. Now, is it appropriate? No, it's not. And I would tell you, FBI agents would tell you they are told they can't take any work product home with me. And certainly once they leave the FBI, they can't keep some of the documents they created on official computers and take them home with them to be able to do that. So that was inappropriate of him to do. I'm still wondering why he prospectively wanted to be able to get out his side of opinion when he heard that the president might have uh, recordings. Uh, if the fear was he might have recordings, he had to get his side out first. Uh, my issue on that initially was, well, if there are recordings, then both sides are, are getting out in a recording. We still don't know if there's actually recording. The president obviously made that tweet, and I would assume uh, the same as Jim uh, Comey does, that I hope there are recordings for Jim Comey's sake, if, if that's out there, but I doubt that they're really there. We've obviously pressed the White House uh, to try to get a firm answer from them on that. The president said he'd be willing to testify under oath. Would you like to question the president, and what would you ask him? Well, the only, only question that I would really have for the president, same things that he's already answered publicly, and that's to be able to put out any cooperation with the Russians of any type. Obviously, he's not under investigation. There hasn't been a direct accusation. Uh, how he pressed uh, Jim Comey, why that conversation even came up uh, on a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, but there's not a lot of great information. There hasn't been a, a direct accusation on the president uh, actually being involved with the Russians. It's been people around him uh, in his, in his uh, campaign. Uh, so uh, th for me, there's not a lot of questions directly to him. On the question of influencing the investigation, again, thinking about the scale, on the one hand, the president might have done something that was a little bit crossing a line, but, but he's a new guy to the, to the job, all the way to this question of obstruction of justice. Where do you put, knowing what you know about the president's behavior, where do you put what, what he did on that scale? I would say it's very inappropriate. Uh, as Jim Comey said, it's awkward uh, to be able to have the President of the United States sitting down with someone in the FBI, the leadership of the FBI, uh, to be able to have direct questions and for the issue to come up about the Michael Flynn investigation. It's inappropriate. Uh, but the way that it was handled, with no follow-up, with no other press, uh, with no other uh, return to that topic, looks like a, what I called a pretty light touch. Uh, if this is trying to interfere in a, in a uh, 
process of any investigation. It doesn't seem like it was number one, very effective, and number two, came up more than once uh, in a conversation. Next, uh, So this m looks more like an inappropriate conversation than obstruction. Next week, you'll get to talk to Attorney General Jeff Sessions. First, will that be in public or private, and what do you want to know from him? We, we have not disclosed and finalized it, public or private. I assume that this will be public, uh, but we're still in that final conversation time with Jeff Sessions. Uh, the key things we've got to get, obviously, his side of the story related to Jim Comey, some of the conversations that Jim Comey had with the president, where uh, Jeff Sessions was a participant there, or at least was around to be able to get the rest of the story. Comey's statement to him of, hey, I don't want to get time alone with the president again, and that interaction, as well as these accusations that are flying out there about conversations that he might or might not have had with Russians prior to the election. So we want to be able to get his side of it, get all the facts out there. We've had a lot of unnamed sources in the media come out and make statements about Jeff Sessions. It'd be very right. good to get it directly from him. All right, Senator Langford, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. We'll be back in one minute.